Um, fax machines. In the 80s, they gave us those fax machines that were dreadful, right? Yeah. It would be practically a stick drawing. Picture or fax? That's almost 100 years old. That's a fax. <laughs> Faxes from the 30s and 40s were this good. I call this another one of those future retro things. We thought faxes were dreadful. Faxes were photo quality as far back as 100 years ago. It was a giant machine about this big, um, and newspapers had it. Because if you think about it, when something happens like World War II or the death of John F. Kennedy, your New York Times, you want to print a picture of that. The picture was taken in Texas. How do you get a picture in Texas to New York the next day, the same day? What, are you gonna send it on a Pony Express? You're gonna mail it? You're gonna fly it? Do you know how many pictures there are in a newspaper every single day of the week? If you had to fly every single picture every single day so that you can scoop the other reporters, and mind you, you're not just flying them to New York, you've got LA, you've got Chicago, you've got Atlanta, Georgia, you wanna print your picture everywhere. So everyone has to wait a week to, to tell you that John F. Kennedy died? and have a picture of it. So newspapers had these fantastic large fax machines. Fax machines were this good and they didn't tell us. And faxes go back even further than that. The French had a giant thing that was kind of like a, a pit and a pendulum. And it was it, it did faxes in the 1800s. We had faxes that far back and it was basically for signatures. It wasn't this kind of quality. So another back to the futurist item that you never thought would be around that long. You've all used typewriters. <laughs> Don't worry, that happens all the time. You've all used typewriters, right? Do you remember, who knows the IBM ball? Who remembers the IBM ball? Okay, the IBM ball was for the, the I know, you, you guys are old as dust now, I'm kidding. <laughs> the IBM ball was only around, it was around the 80s, and it revolutionized typing. Because until then, for 100 years, typewriters had typewriter keys, and the keys would bunch up if you type too quickly. QWERTY. The, one, the system that we use currently is a dreadful system. Why? Because it slows you down. The reason why it slows you down is so that you not type too quick and all the typewriter keys go like this. So if they had in, the IBM ball was that. Ta -da. That is the IBM ball. Now you don't have typewriter keys. So in the 80s, this revolutionized typing. Now you've got this ball that goes choo, choo, and the letters are on the ball and it'll type for you. This, if they had only invented this in the 1800s, we wouldn't have had to use QWERTY and we could use faster, better typewriter keys, you know, the typewriter systems. Well, if we had just invented something in the 1800s, a ball. Wait a second, what's that? The IBM ball, 1890. The Germans already had done this. Basically, IBM reinvented the wheel, <laughs> or the ball. Yep, the Germans had this. It's actually also on my website if you want to get more information. They had, a, they had a typewriter that used the IBM ball. It's just nobody had in a museum of interesting things to have it in their museum, so everyone would know it existed. Yep, IBM actually reinvented it in the 1980s. Another item that's kind of future retro, which unfortunately nobody realized. So we would have had better typewriter systems. And actually, the typewriter community found me, and they're taught, they're, they told me they're trying to change the way the keyboard is set up to use faster systems, but nobody wants to do it because everyone's used to the A being here and the B being over there. They tried to change it actually back when I learned to type in the 80s. There was a system you could type faster. There's the a few. problem was they still they were transitioning to computers and they're still uh, jammed up the old fashioned uh, <laughs> striker keys. So now I, I have a few friends that are still trying to do that. It's been going on for decades and nobody seems to be able to change it. So my, my last item, everyone here is holding a cell phone. Everyone has a cell phone, yeah. but you don't have the modern cell phone that I have, the 1.2 <laughs> cell phone. This is the first cell phone. The first smartphone, sorry. This is the, everyone has a smartphone. This is the first smartphone. It was called the Simon. It was IBM and Bell South. They combined to make a smartphone. And I was amazed, 1992 is when this came out. And you can take a look at this when you walk over over there closer, but this tells you all the things it did, which includes email and a touch screen. Yep, and an address book. This was pretty much almost as good as our smartphones. 
except it didn't take pictures. Although all, all of you can, I, I hope later you all try to take a selfie with us. <laughs> <laughs> so, so that's pretty much uh, my, my little thing over here. There's more stuff over there. The museum does a speakeasy once a month. So I invite you to the speakeasy. I have a sign-up sheet over there. If you want, you can you know, email me the email. We're doing one tomorrow, Doomsday. Doomsday is the space race, um, World War II and the Cold War. And uh, you didn't see, you went to my other Doomsday. I actually now picked up a lot more interesting items having to do with radium and all that. And I finally have a nuclear bomb that I'm <laughs> debuting tomorrow at our speakeasy. Yeah. I have a B-57 thermonuclear weapon, so I, I, we're going to bring it to the speakeasy, and then you can say that our show was the bomb. I'm recording this for the CIA. Right, right. The CIA actually contacted me because I had a cell phone they wanted back. <laughs> yeah. And I told them, I'm not giving it you back. And I fought them pretty harshly. I said, I teach kids. It's from 1970s. What do you need this thing for? You don't need the cell phone. I actually fought them for months. And my friend said, they're going to come over and like take you to jail. And they kept emailing me to get my phone number. And I'm like, if you're the CIA, you should have my phone number. If you need to ask me for your, my phone number, you're schmucks. You're not getting the phone back. And it took months before they got the phone back. Finally, I was like, all right, fine. Take the brain out of the phone and send it back to me. I already knew the brain was taken out of it. Everything that was top secret was gone. But they were schmucks and they didn't know any better. But <laughs> speaking of which, while I was doing this presentation, I got a couple of phone calls. And I know this is terribly rude and it's terribly late. And it's so rude to make a phone call in the middle of something. But, you know, my mom might have called. And you should always call your mom, right? Especially since you're a new mom, you'd appreciate this. So, so is it okay if I just call my <laughs> Right? She's not my mom. <laughs> Is it okay if I just call my mom real quick? Is that okay, guys? Okay, so just stay Please, right there. Hold on a second. <laughs> Hi, mom. I can't talk right now. I'm doing a presentation. Oh, I'm sorry. Did you think I would use my little cell phone? These were the first cell phones. It was actually known as a portable telephone. It's from the 1970s. I love that it has a rotary on it. That makes it even more stupid. Yeah. So the and, and basically the portable telephones and your cell phones are radios. You realize that your cell phones are just glorified radio. It's yeah. using radio signals. The idea behind a cell phone, to put it kind of simply, is basically, it's, think of a honeycomb from a bee, and you've got the, those honeycombs, and the signal's more secure going through that honeycomb. It makes it a little bit more secure. But we knew about cell phones, the first cell phone call was made, and it's April, April 3rd, uh, 1973 by a, a nice Jewish boy called Martin Cooper. Who do you think he called? His mom. Everyone always says mom when I say nice <laughs> Jewish boy. I don't know why. He actually called his competition. Uh, he was working for Motorola and he basically called AT&T and said, gotcha. <laughs> uh, yeah, of course. Um, but yeah, we actually knew about this, the, the concept of a cell phone uh, much further back, like around the 1940s, we already knew about the concept. But uh, putting it simply, the, they, the government didn't give us enough kind of bandwidth, so to say, so that they could, it would be profitable to continue working on it. But yeah, we would have had cell phones much earlier. It was only much later that they made it more possible to be profitable. Uh, so we would have had cell phones in the 40s, in the 50s, in the 60s, at Woodstock. You know, maybe it's better we didn't have cell phones. You notice they waited until 73, till everyone sobered up from Woodstock. <laughs> so that is my show. <laughs> all right, so first of all, thank you so much, Lenny, for this wonderful presentation. Thanks to all of you for your patience in this very long, wonderful Costume and Summit. The fun doesn't stop. First of all, we are going to have dinner. So if you want to come, uh, you can just wait uh, around. How many people are interested in coming? We're going to Gozen, which is 